Ask any school child how the first people arrived in the Americas, and you will likely hear a story that has been passed down for generations. Brave hunters, bundled in furs, crossing a vast land bridge that once connected the tundra of Siberia to the wilderness of Alaska. This now submerged subcontinent is known as Beringia. From there, the story goes, they march south between walls of melting glaciers, entering a new world teeming with woolly mammoths and endless horizons. For decades, science agreed with this schoolyard history. It was a neat and logical narrative. It fit the timeline of the distinctive stone tools, crafted spearheads known as Clovis points, found scattered across North America. These artifacts, dated to about 13,000 years ago, were seen as the definitive calling card of the first Americans, a technologically advanced culture of big game hunters who swept across the continent with incredible speed. This Clovis first model became scientific dogma, but science rarely stays neat for long. The story, as it turned out, was too simple. In recent years, mounting evidence has begun to chip away at this narrative. At sites like Oregon's Paisley Caves, fossilized human DNA was dated to more than 14,000 years ago. Then there was the discovery of human footprints at White Sands, New Mexico, dated to around 23,000 years ago. Evidence that dramatically pushes back the timeline of human presence in North America. These pre-Clovis people were already here, thousands of miles south of the ice sheets, long before standard history said they should be. This presented a massive, unavoidable contradiction. If people were already thriving in the Americas over 20,000 years ago, how did they get past the impenetrable miles-high wall of continental ice that guarded the north? The answer, or lack thereof, lies in a narrow strip of land in what is present-day Canada. They call it the Ice-Free Corridor. And a groundbreaking study has finally examined that corridor, and are revealed not just when the ice melted, but when life itself returned. What they found changes everything. North America, 20,000 years ago, was an unrecognizable world. Two colossal ice sheets, the Laurentide in the east, sprawling from the Atlantic to the Rockies, and the Cordilleran in the west, blanketing the mountain ranges, had merged. They formed a continuous barrier of ice miles high, burying nearly all of Canada and effectively sealing off the rest of the continent from anyone crossing over from Asia. As the Ice Age began to wane about 15,000 years ago, these glaciers slowly, grudgingly started to pull apart. They unzipped from north to south, creating a gap, a corridor approximately 1,500 kilometers long, and in some places, only a few dozen kilometers wide. For years, archaeologists assumed that as soon as this gap was physically open, humans poured through it. But just because a route is physically open doesn't mean it is biologically viable or survivable. A path of barren rock, mud, and glacial meltwater is a place even the most determined travelers would not survive. The researchers argue that the key question is when the ice-free corridor really became viable for humans to cross. They noted that at 1,500 kilometers long, a journey of many months, large animal game would have been absolutely essential to making the journey. You cannot walk 1,500 kilometers carrying all your own food through a barren wasteland. You need drinkable water. You need game to hunt, wood for fires, edible plants to forage. You need a functioning ecosystem. To find out when the corridor actually came alive, researchers had to look at something smaller and more elusive than fossils. They had to look for the traces of life itself, DNA. The team traveled to the bottleneck of the corridor, the very last section to open up as the ice retreated. Here, in what is now British Columbia and Alberta, lie the remnants of Glacial Lake Peace, a massive, frigid, prehistoric body of water that once covered the area, trapped between the retreating ice walls. They drilled deep into the sediment at the bottom of two modern lakes, the last remaining puddles of that ancient glacial lake piece. These sediment cores are exquisite time capsules. Layer by layer, year by year, they hold the history of the world above, trapping pollen, tiny fossils, and chemical signatures from the surrounding environment. Inside these cores, they didn't just look for traditional clues like pollen or ancient bones. They looked for environmental DNA, or EDNA. EDNA is the biological debris of life. It is the faint, lingering genetic trail left behind by every living thing in an ecosystem. It is DNA shed in the soil from skin cells, animal waste, ancient plant roots, and rotting leaves. Because DNA is electrically charged, it binds tightly to particles of clay and sediment, preserving it against the degrading passage of time. This technique allows scientists to take a comprehensive genetic picture of an entire ecosystem from over 15,000 years ago, identifying species from bacteria to mammoths, even if no physical fossil remains. And when they analyzed these traces, layer by layer, the story of the corridor changed dramatically. 15,000 years ago, the ice begins its slow retreat. 
But for the next several thousand years, the corridor is not a welcoming grassy highway. It is a sterile, desolate hellscape. The data show that as late as 13,000 years ago, the exact time the Clovis people were supposed to be using this route, the corridor was almost completely dead. It was a landscape of muddy, icy, impassable terrain, drowned by the frigid, silt-choked waters of Glacial Lake Peace. There was no soil to speak of, no plants, and therefore nothing to eat. It wasn't until about 12,600 years ago that the landscape suddenly, miraculously woke up. The eDNA reveals the arrival of the first pioneers, hardy steppe vegetation. These were tough, resilient plants like aromatic sagebrush that could survive the cold, dry, windswept conditions. Almost immediately after the plants established a foothold, the animals followed. The genetic signatures of bison, woolly mammoths, and jackrabbits appear in the record, showing they were entering the corridor, drawn in by the new vegetation. Finally, by about 11,600 years ago, the region matured into the dense boreal forests of spruce and pine that we recognize in Canada today. This detailed biological timeline leads to a single, stark, and inescapable conclusion. If the corridor didn't have the plants or animals needed to sustain human life until 12,600 years ago, then no human could have survived the journey before then. Yet we know with certainty that humans were already in America thousands of years before this route opened. The ice-free corridor was a dead end. For the first Americans, it was a closed door. This means they didn't walk through the continent. They must have gone around it. The researchers argue that this opening and flourishing of life occurred far too late for the migrating humans who arrived in the Americas about 15,000 years ago. They added that it was even too late for the Clovis people who arrived about 13,000 years ago. This has forced science to look west toward the sea. The coastal route theory, once considered a fringe and speculative idea, is now the leading explanation. It suggests that brave, skilled seafarers moved along the southern coast of Beringia and then down the Pacific coastline of North America. They likely used small boats, hopping from island to unglaciated coastal refugees, moving quickly down a kelp highway, a rich marine ecosystem teeming with fish, seals, shellfish, and seabirds. While the massive ice sheets made the interior of the continent a frozen tomb, the coast was a linear buffet. It is, however, important to note that the critical point of the new findings is not that no one ever used the corridor. Instead, it reveals that even this earlier date is still too late to explain the presence of the pre-Clovis people already living deep within the Americas. The corridor simply could not have been the route for the very first wave of migration. The ice-free corridor eventually did become a major highway for later migrations from the north, a lush and vital path connecting peoples and ecosystems. But for the very first pioneers, the true pre-Clovis discoverers of these continents, that door was firmly locked by ice. They didn't wait for it to open. They found another way. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, you can like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share your thoughts in the comments below. We always love hearing your perspective. Farewell.